Hello and welcome to the final night of the Kaleidoscope of Colors Festival from the Oregon Historical Society. My name is Chris Marks. I'm a longtime OHS member and a past chair of the board of directors, and I'm really thrilled to be able to welcome you to the last night of this festival. As you can see, I'm sitting on my couch, which is kind of a new experience for OHS conventions, where normally we spend days sitting on hard church pews. So maybe this is even better, and we can visit so many more places than we could in a normal convention. And as much as we look forward to seeing you next year in person in Columbus, Ohio, which has wonderful organs in it, this is kind of fun too. Sitting on your couch and maybe even holding a cocktail called The Last Word that was specially chosen for this final night by our OHS mixologist, Peter Dubois. Tonight we hear the oldest organ featured on this festival, in Tan the Tannenberg organ in Old Salem, North Carolina, and it'll be performed by Tim Olson. And then we can move all the way from North Carolina to New Mexico, where we've never visited but with an OHS convention, and hear the Kilgan organ there that was recently recognized by an OHS Historic Organ Award, and it'll be played by James Yeager. And finally, to close out this festival, we'll move to the stunning surroundings of Princeton Chapel, and maybe we'll wish we were really there, because it's beautiful, and I like the couch, but wow, Princeton. And we'll hear Eric Plutz perform on the Skinner organ there that was recently rebuilt by Mander. This festival would not be possible without generous support from our main donors, so I want to recognize and thank Quimby Pipe Organs, Le Tourneau Organs, the Associated Pipe Organ Builders of America, Abbott Downing, and Posse Pipe Organ Builders. We thank them for their support of the OHS and for their support of the Kaleidoscope of Colors. So sit back, enjoy, and welcome again to Michael Barone, who will introduce our performers. Thank you, Chris. We are winding down this exceptional kaleidoscope of color with yet another trio of varied instruments, concluding with the storied organ at Princeton University Chapel. Its history, kind of a progression through the firms of Skinner, Aeolian Skinner, and Mander. For the hymn, we'll explore a resilient 26-rank Kilgan organ at a church in New Mexico. And to get us started, another authentic museum piece, organ by one of the fathers of the American-made pipe organ tradition, David Tannenberg, who came from Germany as a 19-year-old, settled with the Moravian community in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania in 1749, learned organ building from another German Moravian, Johann Gottlob Klemm, who had established himself in Philadelphia, Tannenberg later took inspiration from a treatise by the Thuringian theorist Georg Andreas Sorga, who was a contemporary of Bach. Tannenberg made some 40 instruments, but only nine remain, and the largest of them, and the only one with two keyboards, was created for the Home Moravian Church in Salem, North Carolina. It was installed there in 1800 and served the church well into the 20th century when it was replaced in 1910. They did not throw the organ away or send it somewhere else. They simply dismantled and packed it up and stored it in the attic of the Salem Boys School and other locations in the community. It did suffer from some youthful vandalism. Many of the pipes were stomped flat. But uh, amazingly, nearly every part of the organ was eventually retrieved and a major restoration effort was begun in 1988, the project organized by Paula Locklear for the Old Salem Museum and Gardens, and the reconstruction undertaken by the Virginia shop of Taylor and Booty, a project led by Bruce Scholl. This Tannenberg organ represents American organ building at the turn of the 18th into the 19th century, and also the Lieblich, or lovely, tonal characteristic of Central and Eastern German organ traditions as opposed to those of the North and the South. Since its reconstruction, the instrument has been installed in the Visitor's Center at Old Salem Museum and has been heard in recordings, broadcasts, and concerts. And even new works have been written for it by Margaret Sandresky and Dan Locklear. Timothy Olson, who teaches both at North Carolina School of the Arts and Salem College, knows this instrument quite well. He's recorded and performed on it often, and you might have heard him in a recent Pipe Dreams broadcast celebrating Margaret Sandresky's 100th birthday this past April. You can check the Pipe Dreams archive online if you missed on that. Enjoy his playing here of an instrument dear to his heart, 
period appropriate works by C.P.E. Bach, Haydn, and Johann Christian Kettel, by Moravian composer Johann Friedrich Peter, and new music by Margaret Sandresky are on the program. The David Tannenberg organ at Old Salem's Visitors Center is here played and introduced by Timothy Olson. My name is Timothy Olson. I am the Keenan Associate Professor of Organ at UNC School of the Arts, as well as the organ professor at Salem College. I also serve as cantor at Augsburg Lutheran Church. Today we are here at the Old Salem Visitors Center in front of this magnificent 1800 David Tannenberg organ of two manuals and 14 stops. This organ was restored by the Taylor and Moody organ firm in 2003. Today's program features primarily repertoire from the 18th century, including C.P.E. Bach and the exact contemporaries of Johann Kittel and Haydn. I also have included a transcription of a string quintet movement by Johann Friedrich Pater. I've also included a movement by Winston-Salem native and beloved composer Margaret Sandresky, who celebrated her 100th birthday in May. Imagine yourself sitting in home Moravian church in 1800 and the soundscape that was present at that time. There were no HVAC units, there were no cars or car horns outside, no cell phones beeping, no fluorescent bulbs buzzing. This instrument was designed to accompany congregational song and with it has a very gentle vocal quality to it. I hope you enjoy this program of this wonderful piece of Moravian culture from 1800.
I tell you, the story of the rediscovery and restoration of that instrument is really amazing, as is its sound. The work of David Tannenberg there, restored to new life by Taylor and Booty. You can read more about it in the special 84-page festival program book for our Kaleidoscope of Color. More information at organhistoricalsociety.org. And you can order also by calling 1-833-POSITIVE. That's 1-833-767-4843. Not only within the pages of that booklet will you find colorful photographs, informative articles, performer biographies, and stop lists, but also recipes from some of our illustrious OHS members, such as Carol Terry's Lucky Lemon Cake or Kevin O'Malley's Sticky Toffee Pudding. There's also uh, some selected cocktail pairings. Don't miss out on that. And now, if you've been with us for the past offerings in this kaleidoscope, you'll know that it's time for our traditional OHS group hymn sing. And to lead us down that road is James Yeager, retired as professor of music at Josephinium College in Columbus, Ohio, and relocated to Albuquerque, New Mexico, where he is much closer to our featured instrument, an 1885 Kilgan with an elaborate cherry Gothic style case at Our Lady of Sorrows Catholic Church in Las Vegas. This organ original to the building, and it's been in continuous use since its inauguration. It even retains its original specification, though some of its 28 ranks do require restorative work, which hopefully will be coming soon. We'll again hear a variation from Kurt Knecht's Nettleton Diary and then be led through the well-loved Gregorian hymn Ave Maris Stella. Here's James Yeager and the Kilgan at Our Lady of Sorrows. Hello and welcome. I'm James Yeager, and I'm one of the performers in the inaugural series, Kaleidoscope of Colors, presented by the Oregon Historical Society this August. You're looking at the 1885 George Kilgan tracker organ, 136 years old, that here is here in Las Vegas, New Mexico. Las Vegas, New Mexico is situated at the foot of the Sangre de Cristo Mountains. Founded in 1835, the town's full name in Spanish is Señora de los Dolores de Las Vegas, Our Lady of Sorrows of the Meadows. Las Vegas was a major stop on the Santa Fe Trail. By 1879, the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railway had reached the town. The railroad brought development and many new residents, both respectable and notorious. Among the latter were such legends of the Old West as Doc Holliday, Jesse James, Billy the Kid, and Wyatt Earp. The respectable residents, nevertheless, nurtured a love of culture and the arts with music, operas in the Duncan Opera House, and concerts at many churches. Our Lady of Sorrows Catholic Church, completed in 1869, was built with red sandstone quarried nearby. An impressive pipe organ with a gothic case dominates the nave from the choir loft at the rear and remains in much its original state as dedicated in 1885. Although preserved by the dry western air and benign neglect, the organ is currently in need of substantial repairs. How did the Kilgan organ come here? In May 20th, 1885, the newspaper Las Vegas Optic reported, quote, Lovers of the heavenly art in this cosmopolitan little city were interested in acquiring a pipe organ for the community. Unquote. Judge Charles Blanchard, a prominent citizen and Our Lady of Sorrows parishioner, had heard this instrument built in 1881 at the Mercantile Library Hall in St. Louis, Missouri. Upon hearing the Kilgan organ was available, Judge Blanchard quickly galvanized the resources of the community. By September 26, 1885, the organ, George Kilgan and his son Charles, were headed via railway for Las Vegas, 
where it was installed October 10, 1885. The Las Vegas Optic soon announced that the organ installation was complete and that this organ was one of the largest west of St. Louis. The elaborately finished cherry Gothic case is 30 feet high, 20 feet wide, and 14 feet from keyboard to back. The instrument has mechanical key and stop action and uses slider chests. There are two manuals, three divisions, 25 stops, totaling 1,590 pipes. Wind pressure is 3.5 inches for the whole instrument. The original large double-rise reservoir and pumping bellows were run by water as well as by hand. The wind was electrified in the 1920s. A unique feature of this organ is a pneumatic combination action, currently non-functional. According to organ builder John Gruneau, the organ's wind chest and winding system require restoration. Several of the wooden 16-foot pedal pipes are cracked. In the past, someone raised the overall pitch which damaged cone tune pipes and ruined the swell 8-foot oboe. Work to date on the restoration project by Gruno's firm has been to evaluate its condition, clean out over a century's worth of dust, dead bats and birds, repair damaged pipes, and install tuning sleeves on previously bludgeoned cone tuned pipes. Reminiscent of Charles Blanchard's efforts to inspire the community to come together to raise funds to acquire the instrument, Bonnie Bolton the current organist at Our Lady of Sorrows has inspired interest in the community to bring this treasure fully back to life.
I hope you're enjoying this final set of performances in the Kaleidoscope of Colors Festival. We're so happy to be able to bring together these instruments from all over North America and viewers from all over the globe. If you haven't already, I hope you'll show your support of this ambitious program by making a donation to the OHS. This is a lot like attending a regular OHS event, but from the comfort of your couch and for a lot less money. So we hope that you'll consider making a donation, or if you haven't already, please join the OHS so you can continue supporting our programs. Donations are easy to make. You can do it online during the recital. You can do it later on the OHS website or call the office at 1-833-POSITIF. That's POSITIF with an F. And thank you so much for viewing and being with us and for supporting the OHS and the festival Kaleidoscope of Colors. The final installment in our Kaleidoscope of Colors for the Organ Historical Society takes us to the glorious 2,000-seat English Gothic-style chapel of Princeton University in New Jersey, and an instrument that began life when the chapel was new in 1928 is one of Ernest Skinner's crowning achievements of that time. Skinner had visited Europe, been quite impressed with the work of Henry Willis in England, and at Princeton took his own ideas in a new direction. Indeed, so successful was Skinner's work here that the Aeolian Company almost literally copied it in their subsequent installation at Duke University. The real success of this instrument, though, was somewhat subdued by the acoustical properties of the room. University organist Rafe Downs at the time made some changes, and then in the mid-50s, Carl Weinrich had what was now the Aeolian Skinner Company, led by G. Donald Harrison, make a variety of additional alterations in keeping with the organ reform energies of that era. But after the chapel acoustics had been improved in the 1980s, the Mander Company of England was hired to revitalize the organ. Uh, it was not a complete return to the original Skinner way, but uh, rather a broader expression of what still can be called the American classic ideal. Their work was completed in 1991. Present-day chapel organist Eric Plutz has kept this instrument very much in the public ear, playing for weekly services and academic ceremonies, and particularly during the COVID pandemic, offered a variety of virtual performances by himself and various guests. Eric has made two recordings on the chapel organ issued by Pro Organo and has performed the six symphonies of Louis Vierne in concert there and at several other venues around the country. He knows this organ better than anyone, I dare say, so let's let him explore. It's 137 ranks, repertoire by Alec Whiten, Herbert Howells, Leo Sowerby, William Walton, and Alfred Hollins at Princeton University Chapel. Here is Eric Plutz. Hello, my name is Eric Plutz, and I'm the university organist at Princeton University, a position I've held for the last 16 years. The Princeton University Chapel organ has a colorful history. When it was installed in 1928, it was heralded as revolutionary, especially the contrafagato stop in the pedal division, which was the first of its kind and was created for this instrument. However, the acoustics of the new chapel, which had been artificially deadened by porous tiles, proved to be inhospitable to the sound of the instrument. Just after its installation, a renewed interest in the organs and music of the Baroque period swept the musical world, effectively putting the instrument out of style. From 1943 to 1973, Dr. Carl Weinrich was director of music at the University Chapel. An organist of considerable talent and a historian of great breadth, Weinrich was a proponent of the neo-Baroque movement Throughout his time at Princeton, he focused on the music of Bach and, in the 1950s, was able to engage the Aeolian Skinner Company to modify the 1928 instrument to play music from the Baroque period with more clarity and authenticity. It was at that time that the Nave Division was added to support congregational singing, since the building's acoustics still proved to be problematic. In 1986, the porous tiles of the chapel were sealed to form a hard surface, vastly improving the acoustics for the organ. 
In 1998, the NP Mander Company from London renovated the existing instrument by maintaining the clarity for which Weinrich strove, yet returning the instrument to its original orchestral character. Many new ranks of pipes were added, ranks that had been removed were replaced, and all existing ranks were renovated. Today, the instrument speaks into a room that is more conducive to its sound and it speaks with pipes both old and new, paying homage to its past, yet engaging its future.
Thank you, Eric, James, and Timothy, for a closing night of outstanding recitals. And thank you for being a willing participant along the way these past five Sunday evenings. Kaleidoscope of Colors, a festival of pipes, the 2021 version has ended, but the memories live on. And in fact, all five shows live on at this YouTube channel. So if you missed one or just want to watch them again, you can free of charge. Join us next July when the OHS meets for a live in-person festival in Columbus, Ohio. Thrilling days of pipe organs demonstrated by outstanding performers. That's Columbus, Ohio, July 17th through the 22nd. The list of people, organizations, and supporters to thank is quite long. But as a point of privilege, I would like to thank the management team in Villanova, Marcia Summers, Bynum Petty, Annette Lynn, and Richard Spots. Also, a huge shout out to the members of the Kaleidoscope Task Force, without whom this program would not have come together. And they are Damon Spritzer, Christopher Marks, Michael Diorio, and James Keeley. Thank you to Michael Barone, of course, our esteemed MC. And a last word of gratitude to our platinum sponsors, Abbott Downing, Letourneau Organs, Pazzi Organs, Quimby Organs, and the Associated Pipe Organ Builders of America. This has been a labor of love for all involved, for our organists, their videographers, our production team, the book publishers, writers, editors, and contributors. I would be remiss not to mention our dear friends, Lynn Dobson and John Panning, and the entire family at the Dobson Pipe Organ Company in Lake City, Iowa. We lift them up with expressions of support and love as they recover from an unbelievable catastrophe. To you, our loyal viewer, Thank you for taking time out of your summer activities to join us in this spectacular event. To our OHS members, thank you for your support. And to our new friends, please consider joining our family. It's never too late to send in a donation to help cover the cost of this production. $20 gift per episode goes a long way in helping us reach our goal. And finally, thank you to the instruments and the folks who care for them. It is these instruments that tell the stories and create the sounds we celebrate together. Goodbye from the Oregon Historical Society in Villanova, Pennsylvania.